Good morning and welcome. Happy Christmas. Ugh. Steve, what did you get all over my face? Toothpaste? Cat food? He walked on my face. Now he's playing with something. Everybody say good morning, Steve. Um, it's uh, 10.30. It's Christmas Eve. And it's time for another episode of Why Is This a Thing? And today we're going to try to finally answer the question that has been bugging everybody for several neat weeks now in regards to Wizards of the Coast proposed digital marketplace for Dungeons and Dragons. Generally, the uh, rollout from this has been, this is a dumb idea, this is stupid, you're going to ruin D&D, why would you do this? It doesn't make any sense. Well, it does make sense from a certain point of view. In fact, you know, I know this upsets a lot of people, but if you remove emotion and anger and just look at the things Wizards of the Coast are attempting to say, they do make sense. I mean, even 4th edition and everything they did with 4th edition makes a certain twisted sense. And everything they've done with 5th edition makes a certain twisted sense. And everything they're doing now with 6th edition, on some level, makes sense. We don't agree with it. I think most of us don't agree with it. Most of us think, even some of the people who approve of it think, you know, are like, well, okay, I totally approve of what you're doing, Wizards of the Coast, but maybe you could have done it a different way. You know, look at the response to the changing race to species. Even the people who thought it was a good idea still are like, well, maybe you could have done better. Maybe you could have done it a different way. Now, some of these people are just trying to get attention and just being, you know, uh, jerks for the sake of being jerks and playing the virtue signaling card for the sake of playing signaling card. But somewhere in there, there's actually people who are like, you know, I, I like this idea, but there's a better way to do it. And then we have the people in the middle who are like, I, I get this idea but there was definitely a way to do this better. And then there are the people who are angry at this who are just like, this is a dumb idea. So the big one is the digitization of the Dungeons and Dragons marketplace. Why would Wizards of the Coast do this? Why does Wizards of the Coast think that once they implement this digital currency marketplace on D&D Beyond and the virtual tabletop, people will use it? I mean... Oh, gee, for 10 bucks you could have a digital hat on your digital character in the digital game. You're spending real money for something that doesn't exist. That's a horrible idea. Except we know this works. And just to uh, use the closest um, thing that I can think of that's sort of in the same market. I mean, obviously, there's, as I like know, but there's no BTTs that are doing what Wizards of the Coast are going to try and do with theirs. I mean, I don't think there is. The closest there is is, you know, you can get props and maps for, like, Fantasy uh, or uh, Roll20 or whatever. But, uh, you know, the digital cosmetics, I don't think there's any VTT that does that yet. So it's an originally unique idea. They would be presenting a, something that, as far as I know, nobody else has done. And basing it on comparison... The closest thing I can think of is Path of Exile. Path of Exile has a very vibrant digital marketplace. Every season, so every four months, they introduce tons of new digital cosmetics you can buy for your characters, and people spend money on it. In fact, uh, this year alone, Grinding Gear Games made thirty-six grand, three three hundred and sixty-five thousand five hundred and one dollars in just the digital earnings they they don't charge grinding gear doesn't charge anything for people to play path of exile they don't charge you anything for the upkeeps they don't charge you anything for the fixes they don't charge you anything for the dlc they don't charge you anything to play they don't charge you anything to post they don't charge you anything to mod they make all their money for path of exile on the digital marketplace and this year alone they've made you know 36k simply off digital hats and these cosmetics have no effect on the game it's not pay to win it's not i'm going to go to the auction house and pay real money to buy the best item on the market no these this is all digital i mean there's stuff that you know like 
equipment you can buy, but most of this is, um, you know, if somebody... I mean, that's not completely true because, yes, you can go on the digital marketplace and buy weapons that people don't want anymore. But a lot of the weapons are bind on account, and a lot of the stuff is bind on account for Path of Exile. So most of the stuff people can sell um, that actually affects character mathematics, like trinkets or uh, mats or whatever, are very limited. Uh, and that money doesn't really go to Path of, Path of Exile grinding gear. That money is usually a direct exchange I th you know um, and is often done through third-party auction houses of which grinding gear has nothing to do with from what i understand now obviously i'm probably getting a lot of this wrong but we can just erase all that and just understand that path of exile is an example of what wizards of the coast is trying to do and path of exile on average makes about you know 40 grand a year simply off that digital marketplaces so that's forty thousand people who paid a dollar each, you know, for a digital hat, for lack of a better exclamation. And I'm probably explaining this all wrong because I'm an idiot and I've got stuff on my space. I don't know what that is. Nobody cares. But that's, that's what Wizards of the Coast is thinking. This will work for D&D &D because it works for all these other games. So if all these other people are spending money on this video game market to buy digital cosmetics, when they come over here to play D&D &D, virtual tabletop and they want to play their character and they want to play their character exactly the same way they imagine their character to be, you know, whether it be purple hat or I've got the fox ears and a fox tail or smoke comes out of my ears whenever I get angry, whatever it is. They're going to supply these and charge you real money. And this market works. Now, the thing is, as always with Witches of the Coast, while the idea is sound and totally makes sense, the implication, impl implantation, words, the use, the actual, once this idea rolls out, it will probably fail just because history has shown us that most of the ideas wizards of the coast comes up with look good on paper but inevitably are a disaster so why would this fail because the market is you know there obviously um and we know that people like me are not the target audience they're not thinking you know grognards are going to log on to D, D beyond and D, D virtual tabletop in 2024 and spend hundreds of dollars to make their characters look like what the way they imagine their characters to look on the tabletop. We, we're not, I'm not the target audience. The Grognards, the OSR, the people like me, we're not the target audience. So the target audience is the actual 5e player base, or so they think. But the general response so far, not counting the people who are just like, oh, angry, I'm not going to pay for D&D. You know, the general pe the response from the people who might actually use this has been non-existent um and i don't it doesn't feel to me like the marketplace is translate i mean i find the marketplace kind of ridiculous oh i've spent 20 bucks to get a purple hat for my character in path of exile that doesn't change my gameplay experience whatsoever except now my character looks different than every other character i don't i don't get that but i know it works we've seen it work we've seen it work dozens and dozens of times dozens and dozens of game companies use this mechanic use this digital marketplace and they make bank off of digital hats so we know it works so there's no it makes sense that wizards of the coast would try to do this knowing full well that they're trying to take DD digital so why is this going to fail because the general consensus is it's not going to work it could be that just people feel that wizards of the coast is offering more than they can you know give you know you're you're writing checks you can't cash this is not going to do what you say it's going to do especially when it rolls out these systems are always buggy and it can take months or even years to, to get a digital marketplace to actually work the way it's supposed to World of Warcraft still has problems with its auction house and its digital marketplace. And World of Warcraft has been around forever. Um, so that could be it. It could just be that the D&D &D market and the 
Path of Exile, um, Fortnite, video game market isn't the same even the Wizards of the Coast thinks it is. Now, most people think that this is going to fail. I mean, it could succeed because the idea is sound. But it doesn't feel like it will for two reasons. One, it's Wizards of the Coast. And everything they do ends up being a disaster when it comes to the actual use. Even people who appreciate what they do find fault in it. And nine out of ten times either just ignore it or, you know, misinterpret it or homebrew it anyways. And the other thing is just, just the, the paywall is multiple levels. And that's, you know, the people that, Digi that Wizards of the Coast think is their target audience are probably not the people who are going to pay money to use the service as well as pay money, you know, to buy a digital hat. How is this different than World of Warcraft? People do that in World of Warcraft all the time. It's, it's, it isn't different than World of Warcraft, except it is different than World of Warcraft. And the even though the mentality is similar, it's also different enough that whoever the 6E audience is are probably not going to invest the amount of money Wizards of the Coast thinks they're going to invest in this digital marketplace to make it worthwhile. So again, in closing, we can be all, rah, rah, Wizard of the Coast, you're ruining my, I don't understand why, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to pay for D&D. Or we can be like, okay, well, you know what? I get it. I get why you're doing this. All right. I get that this marketplace works in other video games. So why wouldn't it work in the Dungeons and Dragons VTT video game market? The same people who spend money on the digital hats in World of Warcraft will probably spend money on the digital hats in the D&D video games and the D&D virtual tabletop and D&D beyond, right? But D&D is free. Well, yeah, but all the digital stuff isn't free, and it's really not different than any other digital things we pay for for D&D if we use this as a tool to help us with D&D. And yet, it just feels like it's going to fail. And it's there's, that, there's a certain level of just intangible, it's going to fail. It's not what people really want associated with this. And it could just be Wizards of the Coast tracks record, it could just be, this is just, again, such a drastic, nonsensical change. It could just be the way Wizards of the Coast is going about it. Perhaps if they had just presented this in a different way, much like 4th edition, um, maybe it wouldn't be setting itself up to fail. Because, again, the idea is sound on paper, but I think we all, most of us agree that when it actually rolls out, it's just going to be presented in such a way that nobody's going to want to have a part of it. Now, you know, again, in regards to the people who are all upset about it, you're not the people Wizards of the Coast thinks is their their target market, which is probably a huge percentage of the issue. That people like me are perceived as, you know, um, horrible, awful people who don't want to have anything to do with D&D. And so they keep excommunicating us out of the equation failing to understand that, no, if you just stop doing this, we probably would. But you've invested so much energy in pushing us away, you're not giving us a reason to want to support you. And this is just another choice where we feel we are being excluded from Dungeons & Dragons. You're going out of your way to push away the older players. You're gearing the D&D market for a market that doesn't play D&D. &D. And you're expecting them to invest the same level of money that these people who play world of warcraft do and on paper you think they would but in reality probably that's not going to happen so hopefully i've clarified why wizards of the coast thinks this is a good idea though i've probably not anyways i'm the OGGM, just spouting off random stuff this christmas eve if you appreciate this nonsense let me know if you don't appreciate this nonsense let me know we're probably going to be talking about 1D&D &D, 6th edition all through 2023 but this doesn't mean i am pro 6th edition, or I think anything about 6th edition is good or necessary. It just means it's news, and I talk about the news, so yeah. Buy my merch!